Lowering your body fat percentage is a tip that I couldn't leave out of the top five. Because even if you were active and you did have muscle and you could do pull-ups and push-ups and you spent a lot of your days being active, if you are one of those people and you don't see huh? tone in your arms, I'm 100% sure that you are somebody that has a higher body fat percentage. It's impossible that you're able to do 20 pull-ups or push-ups and run daily, cycle daily, kayak daily, and have a low body fat percentage and not see tone in your arm. I guarantee it. And if you know that person, please send me a message and prove me wrong. And the same goes the other way around. If you are somebody that has a thinner physique or a lower body fat percentage and you don't use your body or your muscles, you're equally not gonna see the tonage in your arms. If I, at the same body fat percentage, stopped training and just laid on my couch for months, I'm not gonna have the same tonage that I do now. So you don't necessarily have to be in the gym to have toned arms, but you do have to use your arms. I'm a personal trainer, so I am always in the gym and training people with weights, but personally, I don't lift weights. My main sport is cycling, and it has been for many years. I'm also pretty active in my daily life, and so I'm kayaking and swimming and running and hiking and kickboxing, and I'm always using my arms. And I do believe that going to the gym and lifting weights will help speed up that process, but it isn't necessary. So if you are somebody who already has a leaner physique, it's going to be the activity and the movement of your arms that you're going to have to include. Salt retains 100 times its weight in water. So oftentimes it looks like fat in the body and it's also very easy to drop. As soon as you intake salt, it just is a matter of one or two days before you see the effects of the salt around your muscles. And the same goes for when you remove it. One or two days, you're gonna see a difference right away. So that is one of the most quickest and easiest ways. If you haven't seen the salt experiment, it's a lot older of a series that is on this channel. Although those videos are a little bit old and recorded with not the best quality, the information in there is still valid and top quality. If you're a little bit confused of how much sodium you should be having per day, I would aim for 1000 milligrams. In my personal experience and the experience of my clients, I always find that your tricep muscle are the muscle that you start to see definition in first, and it's really motivating to start seeing results. So this exercise in particular, we call it the triple threat, and basically it's three different movements that target your tricep. Let me show you. The first movement is a standing cable tricep extension. You wanna make sure that your upper arms are close to your body, and then you're just moving your forearms. Then you wanna reverse your grip and do the same thing. Sorry about the camera angle. And then last, you're doing overhead extensions and you want to make sure that your upper arm is nice and straight and that you're just extending your forearms. Pull-ups and chin-ups are one of my number one exercises when it comes to your arms. It's more of a compound exercise, but in my opinion, one of the greatest exercises that you can do for your arms. If you're new to doing pull-ups, I recommend getting one of these bands. This is a very helpful tool to help you be able to do a full pull-up on your own. It's gonna allow you to take some weight off of your body so that you're actually able to get your chin over the bar. So the more advanced way would just be full body weight. The second most difficult would be by putting your knee in the band. That's going to take off some weight. And then by putting your leg into the band, you're actually going to be taking off a lot more weight. So if you don't have access to a gym and you're looking for exercises to do at home, another very popular exercise that targets your triceps is dips. You want to make sure you keep your back nice and close to the bench and you want to have a 90 degree angle with your arms when you're coming down. You can do it with your knees bent and then you can also extend your legs. And then you have the good old shoulder press and forward and lateral rises. Another great exercise is the preacher curl. To make it a little harder, allow there to always be resistance and tension on your bicep by not allowing your arm to come all the way up. 
when you come all the way up you get a little bit of a rest you're going to feel that your arms get a lot more tired faster this way another great exercise for your arms is push-ups and push-ups can be intimidating for some people but there are variations that you can do that are a lot easier and then you can work your way up to doing a full standard push-up so one way is to get a bench or a table if you're at home or something that is a little bit higher off the ground to allow your body to go in a bit of a decline this is going to take a lot of weight off of your arm and allow you to get a full 90 degrees or lower with your arms when you go down and if you don't have a bench you can always do push-ups on your knees and then the levels above that would be to do hand release push-ups, which kind of allows you to get that rest at the bottom. But also allowing you to get that full range. And when it comes to exercising your arms or exercising in general, I always do preach compound lifts, but more so I think it is important to target the muscle that you're trying to work in all different angles. And in my opinion and experience, that is how you're gonna see the fastest results. And a lot of people have this misconception and I know this because I experience it or I have a lot of my clients who ask me, you know, I wanna lose weight on my stomach, but not my legs. Or I wanna lose weight here on my arm or any specific part of their body. But the truth is your body doesn't lose weight on the spot where you train it the most. Definitely you're gonna build muscle on the spot where you train the most, but the fat that's on top of it, that leaves the body on its own terms. There's nothing you can do to control where you lose fat on your body first. Consistency and lifestyle. And this kind of ties all of the tips together. You can't expect just to, you know, put all of these things into place for two weeks and have results. And you can't expect that after you get results, you're going to maintain the results if you stop. And so you want to figure out a way to be able to incorporate all the above in a way that's sustainable and more part of your life and a habit and something that you look forward to rather than a chore. So you might be like, well, how do I do all of the above and keep it sustainable? For example, cutting salt. Instead of going out for your meals, you can start cooking your meals at home and make that a habit. So this way you can control the amount of salt that is going into your meals. And that is going to allow you to cut back on a lot of salt. And I guarantee you will see a difference. And being active, for example, instead of signing up for a gym, if that's not something that you're into, try and join a club or a mixed martial arts class or a dance class or anything that you have available. Maybe it's rowing or swimming, anything that intrigues you, anything that excites you or something that you would aspire to be good at. Try and join one of those clubs and form a social community around it. Not only will that hold you accountable, but it's something to look forward to. It's a way to make friends and also a way to keep it into your life long term. So I hope that was helpful. Don't forget to hit the thumbs up. It really does help. And subscribe if you haven't already and you want to see more content like this. Bye guys.